All right. I'm going to be talking about how to deal with the police in a work type situation, like if you're at work, like if you're working uh, as a receptionist or you're working security like at a factory uh, or business or something like this. I'm going to give you a situation scenario. You know, and I'll, I'll do that here in a second. Now, they make these videos on the in, on YouTube, and they talk about how to deal with the police if they uh, pull you over, and what you what you can say and do, and and all that, which you know that's all fine and dandy, and you know you do everything you can on that, but uh, I don't think people know how to deal with the police. When it comes to a work type situation, uh, they'll come in like they're uh, like they're macho John uh, John Wayne type uh, police. Usually, it's the state police is the ones that usually they have this usually cocky. Uh, the state police I've 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 discovered that the state police mostly are uh, are mostly cocky. Um, now I'm talking specifically about the Indiana State Police. I'm not talking about the Tennessee Highway Patrol because I've not really had that much interaction with the Tennessee Highway Patrol compared to the uh, Tennessee State Police. The Tennessee State Police have got more of a cocky, cocky attitude, and I support the police. But the Tennessee Highway, the Tennessee State Police has got really, really cocky when they pull you over. But if you're dealing with the police. And I've, and I've worked in NK America. I was working security, and I've noticed this. And this is something that they need to put in the uh, security protocols. If you're working security inside of a plant or warehouse or business, and you've got people that, that works there. Let's just say, let me give you an example. Let's say the state police comes in, or just a regular sheriff or local police comes in, and they say, well, we've got a warrant for the rest of, uh, of a person that, that's working in your plant. Um, and you know, you don't want to be a stooge, you know, you don't want to look like you're a stooge or um, look like you're a, uh, someone that's gonna get someone in trouble, you know. And, uh, and the best way to handle that type of situation is usually those places that have plants um, like these factories and plants and places like that they usually have a a PA system when you when you first come in and you have like a receptionist and a lot of times during the daytime and in these different and some of these places are different some places have security guards that works uh, in the daytime, like Monday through Friday, and sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's just a receptionist. But to say, usually after four o'clock, you're not going to have a secretary there at the front desk. Is, is usually going to be a security guard. And say you're a security guard. State police comes in there. Say two state troopers come in there. Usually they come in there at least two of them. They don't. It's it's not usually one, but they usually bring two. And they said we're looking for so and so forth, and we um, we're looking for him at this particular place. And usually, what you could do is they have a supervisor, and you don't know that person from Jack Squat who that person may be. Now, if you got on the PA system while they were there and said hey uh the police are looking for you the the cops will probably arrest you because you tipped them off uh, what i would do if you're in that type of situation is if you know who that person's supervisor is what you could do when the state police is there in the lobby area uh, you would tell the state police 
and let them do the dirty work. You don't have to do their dirty work for them. Don't, you don't have to do their dirty work for, for them at all, okay? You're not paid to be a police officer. If you're not a police officer, you're not paid to do their dirty work for them. So this is what you, this is what you need to do. Um, and pay close attention to this. You gotta keep notes on this. Um, usually a lot of these uh, lobby areas have got telephones in the main lobby area and the ones I know had, did and then you tell the uh, the police that they've got to dial this number that they have to punch in the number and you and and that number goes to the supervisor okay and um, what you could do is if you know the supervisor's name or whatever it may be and you know the phone that's uh, uh, let's say there's a phone right there at the reception receptionist area separate from the security guards phone okay and usually it's for the people come in to use the phone let's say it's extension number two five seven for example so what you do is you get on the phone Okay, and you say you know the supervisor's name, you know the guy that they're the guy they're looking for, the girl they're looking for, and you say uh, let's say that the supervisor's name is uh, Bill Ma uh, Bill Watkins. Okay, you say Bill Watkins dial uh, two three four or five seven six or whatever it may be, and then they'll call that number. That number. And you tell the state police that you'll be able to talk. They'll be able to talk to their supervisor or that, that person. And that supervisor will call that number. And it's right there where the state, uh, the police officer right there. And the police officer will pick up the phone. Okay. And then they'll say, the state police or the whoever it may be, they'll say, we're looking for so on and so forth. Okay? That way you're out of it. Because you're not a, uh, a squealer. You know? You're, what you're doing is you're putting that... You're putting it on the, uh, on the state police. And the person... Uh, that person's supervisor and, and that. That's who you're doing. You're actually putting the... Uh, the supervisor on the spot. If you're working security, and I've been in this type of situation, and they never they never told us about this, and looking back, and I'm gonna pass this on to if you're working security. If you work in security, I'm telling you right now, you need to, you need to take note of this. If you work in a place that got a they got a phone separate from the security guard phone, okay, uh, the receptionist area, and I know a lot of these factories have got these. They'll have another, they'll have like a lobby phone with an extension number on it, okay? And I'll, and uh, the main security phone, it rings into the PA system. And all these factories, all of these factories, especially if you're working security, uh, all these factories or plants or offices have got a PA system. If they say they don't have a PA system, they're lying, okay? They have a PA system inside the place. But you call that PA system number, you can either push a button, just one button, or you dial an extension number, you can say dial 110. And they have to push a button, they pick up. But if you tell, uh, if you page the supervisor to dial 237 or whatever, and that's the number, and you tell the police officer there, that's the number you got to pick it up. That's going to be the supervisor you need to talk to in order to get a hold of the person that you're looking for, you know. And uh, you can't leave your your desk, and you have another security guard out there. Uh, you shouldn't have to go out there and uh, get that person and bring them up so that they can arrest them. And actually, but legally by law, so this is what I was told. Legally by law, 
a police officer cannot go into a, a business and arrest somebody unless they go they have to go through the front desk uh, security first they have to go through they have to take out protocol because they can get sued so they may expect you to do their dirty work for them you don't have to like I said I'm giving you a way out to where uh, it's between the supervisor that person's supervisor and the police if you're working security or you work in the front desk there's no reason why and you have to work here no matter what happens if the word gets out that you squeal on people and you and you work at some place you're going to have the reputation that, that that whole place is not going to like you so because if you're just saying um, you got to talk to the, the boss the their supervisor then that's not going to be on you because that's where you need to put it at now the police may come back and say well I want you to go out there and get them you don't have to do that that's not your job your job is not a police officer you sh you're not you shouldn't do their dirty work for them I mean uh, you give them a uh, an avenue where they can get a hold of the supervisor. Yes, you can help them out that way, but you don't have to go beyond and go out in the plant, hunt that person down, make a citizen's arrest. You know, if they were a dangerous person, that might be a different situation. But if they were just, uh, if it was like child support or some other. BS, whatever it may be, uh, you should keep that between the super uh, that person's supervisor and the cops, you know. And uh, like I said, they don't have no protocols whatsoever, as far as I know. There's no protocols on how to deal with the the police. If if like if they're looking for someone that works at a factory. There's no protocols. I don't think there's any protocols. If there is, okay, let me know. But I don't think there's any protocols on how to deal with the police if you're working security, if they're looking for someone, if they got a warrant for someone's arrest. And that's the way you do it. You make sure when you work in that, that job, you make sure, of course, you don't want the supervisor to know about it, but you make sure that there is a separate phone there an extension phone there and you use that as a tool like a buffer between you and the police because believe me you need a buffer between you and the police with what's going on I support the police and everything but sometimes the police can uh, can become a little bit overwhelming and a lot of times they'll overstep their bounds and you need to put them you need to push them over to the side a little bit and buffer the buffer them out with a cop the way the cops act the way the cops have been acting and I've, I've noticed this for the last 20 30 30 years or so the cops that you need to put up a, like a zone or a buffer zone between you and the police because they got this they naturally have this arrogant cocky type of attitude already when you deal with them when when they're pulling you over but you don't have to put up with that crap when you're in a job type of situation when you're in a job type situation you can control the scenario where they're not being pushy on you where you could divert their attention over here on the side okay and you need to do that to them because a lot of times they'll come in they they'll whip their badge out and say I'm Johnny badass you know and you know that don't impress me and a lot of times they'll overstep their uh, authority you know it's one thing for them to pull you over and deal with them that way but when they come to your home or they come to your business where you work at 
you don't have to deal with them the same way. You, you do not deal with them the same way, believe me. You, and the last thing you need to do is to feed their ego. And if they feel like that you are caught off guard, they're going to take advantage. They're going to take advantage of you. So, um, and if they feel like you're not cooperating with them and all that, they'll say, well, uh, interfering with a police officer and and they, they may threaten to arrest you and all this other crap. You don't want to appear that you're going to interfere with what they're doing. But at the same time, uh, you shouldn't you shouldn't be the little punk. You shouldn't punk out to them, you know. And I'm hoping this this will help you on how to deal with the police. How to deal with the police in a work type situation, especially if you're working security uh, at a front desk, because you're gonna you're eventually gonna come into you're eventually gonna have to deal with that type of situation. Because they're always looking for someone and they're going to expect you to do their dirty work for them because from what I've been told legally they're not allowed to go into a plant they have to go to the front desk and if they have to go through you they're going to try to make you do their dirty work for them and you don't have to do their dirty work for them uh, you can give them the tools to help them, uh, but the only thing you could do is if if you have if there is a phone there uh, available that they could use, and you know the extension number, and you need to write it down on a piece of paper. You need to be ready for that, so in the case they come in. And then you tell the other security guard about, you know, uh, you need to tell have this conversation with the other security guards prior to it. That way, they're prepared because they may they may be caught off guard and they'll say, "Well, Mark, how come you're not doing it this way? Why can't you Why can't you go out and get that guy get the guy they're looking for?" And and then. And then it'll make it look like you're not cooperating with the police and all that. So that's the reason why you need to talk to the other, your fellow guards or the fellow workers and tell them, hey, this is, you know. And they say, well, this has never been a problem here. Look, look, trust me, eventually the cops are going to come to your the business that you work at and they're going to look for somebody that they're going to have a warrant for their arrest. It's eventually going to happen. It happens all the time. I've seen it happen in every, about every business there is that's got a plant. If you got three, four hundred people that work in that plant, chances are, chances are, the cops are going to come there looking for somebody. And it happens in any any plant. It's got over three, four hundred, or, or thousand people that work in the plant. Someone there has got a warrant for their arrest in that plant, whether it be Cummins, uh, NK America, Arvins, Reliance, or any business out there that's got a significant amount of employees, there's, there is someone there that's got an outstanding warrant for their arrest, either child support or any other, any type of situation. And you're eventually gonna be faced with this situation as a security guard. As a security guard, you're going to be dealing with the with the police, and they're going to ask you to uh, basically to um, cooperate with them. And the only thing you have to do, if they're looking for a certain person, and they know they that person works there, the best thing to do is you need to talk to your supervisor. And you need to know the, empl the the employees. You need to have a, a, an actual list of the employees that works at the place you're working at, the people that work at that plant. You need to know who their supervisor is and you need to have a list. And they say, if they're looking for Joe Bob, for example, and that's the person they want to arrest, 
and you look on their name, Joe Bob, and it says super, their supervisor, okay, next to it, then all you gotta do is get on the PA system and, and say that person's, that supervisor's name, and uh, the dial, this extension number, that's right next to the police. And I know I've been going on and on about this, but I'm trying to explain it so you understand it. And you tell, the you page the supervisor to call that extension number, cops pick up the phone okay They're right there and the cops will tell them I'm looking for so and so forth and if they say why are you looking for my employee you know and uh, you let the cops argue with the supervisor okay um, you don't want to call you don't want to page an employee okay because the employee would feel like he's being set up by the security so you don't want to be a narc when it comes to that so what you got to do is you got to get a hold of their supervisor okay and the supervisor he could BS if, if, if he's if he's buddies with the guy they're looking for he could say he could say, oh, he's not here. He's not here or whatever, you know. They can't come in that place. They can't. Now, it would be stupid if the person was there and the, and his boss said that because they, they might have the state, they might have the police outside waiting for him. Or they might be wa watching the roads. And then they find out the supervisor's lying about it, they're going to take they're going to take the, their supervisor to jail. But that's what I'm saying. You you would give the, the, the supervisor the opportunity of whether or not they want to protect their employee or not. That's between them and his employee. And if you, if the supervisor, let's just say it was over some BS, right? Okay. He could tell his employee, he said, look, the cops are looking for you and uh, I'll say you're not here and and I'm talking about if it's just like a little minor BS not some major stuff and he can, he can say hey it's just uh, I'll tell him that you're not here and all this and uh, I suggest um, you get out of here as soon as possible I'll try to cover for you as much as I can um, but if they find out I'm I'm screwed basically um, but it puts the supervisors in a really bad situation you know and uh, but like I said I'm telling you you're gonna be faced with this situation as a security guard you're eventually going to be faced with this situation if you're I'm not talking about motel security I'm not talking about security and other type of situations I'm talking about specifically like at a factory type of situation where you got a bunch of per, uh, people working in the factory and they're usually contract security and they treat the contract security people different than the people that than in-house security but even if you were in-house security and the and the cops came up to me I'm not going to do their I, I'm not going to uh, uh, do their dirty work for them I mean I'll help them out I'll help them out to a point but I'm going to leave it on the, the supervisors and they said well they say this person's here and according to what I've been told they're, they're not legal they're not able to legally go into the uh, the plant and they have a supervisor obviously but if the person is a supervisor uh, I guess you could just I guess you could page them to call the number I don't know anyways it's 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 a really it's a really it's a shitty situation no matter what how you get into it if it if, if if it's the supervisor 
then I guess you just, I guess, uh, uh, I guess it's going to have to be between them and the cops, I guess, unless you tip them off. I don't know, but when, it, but if you know, they're looking for someone, and uh, and it's not the supervisor. You could keep that between the supervisor. Could he's a buffer between the uh, the cops and the and the person that's working for him. That the person that's working for him. He could tell them. Uh, he could call them back and see if they're there. And uh, or he could call. He could talk to them and say, "Look, what do you want to do here? Um, I'm gonna give you. If it was me, if it was one of my employees, and I know they didn't do anything wrong, I would tell them. I would say, "Look, what do you want me to do here?" And I'm giving you a heads up. And you got a couple of options. Of course, I don't want to be blamed, and I don't want to go to jail over this. What do you want me to tell the cops? Do you want me to tell the cops you're not here? Um, or what do you want me to do? I'm going to leave it up to you. But at the same time, I don't want to get in trouble. If I say you're not here, then, then I'm, you know, you can't be here. Because I'm not saying they'll come here, but they might have... They might have a patrol car waiting out here for you. Or they might be waiting down the road. And if you open up your mouth and say, oh, yeah, I was there, then it's it's going to be my butt on the line. So no matter what it is, it's a, <laughs> no matter what it is, it's a shitty situation. You know, I don't have all the answers, but that hopefully somewhere in what I've been saying would help. Uh, someone deal with that type of situation you know and uh, if you have any questions you can ask me how to deal with different types of situations how to deal with difficult uh, uh, bosses the places you work at it's a science you, you gotta have the knack for it and uh, it's not easy you know Dealing with the police is bad enough. Dealing with them on the road. Make sure you have your insurance and your driver's license and all that. That's that's bad enough. But having to deal with them on a work type situation. Uh, it's, that could be pretty intense. And you need to know. You need to know how to deal with them in a work type situation. Because believe me. They will eventually police from somewhere will eventually come up there and ask where is where is so and so forth especially if you've got a place that's got a lot of employees that work there so, like I said if you have any questions or whatever you can contact me thank you